Hello and welcome from the beautiful Black Bear Resort in Davis, West Virginia. So before I begin, I want to say yesterday we took a great hike to the uh, Blackwater Falls State Park where we came across what I'd say was a pretty cool looking overlook of the falls themselves. It looked a little bit like this. So that's pretty cool. Well, at any rate, once we got done with our hike, came home and came back to the cabin and immediately rained for about 16 hours straight. So we weren't able to get a ton of hiking done the next day, but we did uh, take a drive back to uh, take another look at the falls. So on the second day, they look like this. Wild and wonderful, huh? Anyway, back to the matter at hand. So today I'll be demonstrating the free motion joint, which is brand new in Momdyne version 0.9. And like any good engineer, I will be validating my model with some experimental data. So to get started, I'm mom. I'll create my model. I'm gonna call this free motion. Give it the description that it's a demonstration of free motion of a rigid body and dynamic stability. I'll show you what that means shortly. I'm gonna have gravity in our model. That's going to be in the minus y direction. A couple other new things in here that I'm going to touch on. So first I'll set the tolerance a little bit lower than the default. The simulation is pretty quick here, so that will simply just uh, smooth it out a little bit. And I'm going to set the approximate size to 0 0.5. Uh, that scales how the fonts and lines get drawn. Um, an iPhone is relatively small, so we set that to a smaller number than the default that is 1. And then playback speed, I'm going to set that to 0 0.25. What that'll do is just make this play in slow motion. Okay. Here we get started with our blank slate. Pull open the edit menu, go into joints, and we see the brand new free motion joint. So I'll hit the plus button. Uh, don't give it, need to touch too many of the defaults right now because we'll come back to that later. But what I will do is take this initial R0 value. I'll give that a value of 1 for 1 radian. And what that will do when we come back to our frame here is we'll see it's rotated. Uh, I think that comes out to a little bit under 60 degrees. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is actually switch over to Google Collaboratory where I'll explain some of the features uh, of the iPhone actually and how that relates to the modeling that we'll be doing next. Here's the notebook that I'm keeping alongside with this uh, video. I'll be sharing it with the video just uh, for purposes of showing some of the data and uh, allowing for a little bit of experimentation. But to start with, I'm going to be using it just to define some of the properties of the iPhone itself. So first off, uh, this is a graphic that Apple provides on their website depicting the coordinate axes of the iPhone. So if you're holding it vertically, uh, what you'll get is off the right hand side the x-axis, vertically the y-axis, and then out of your page or out of your screen is the z. Uh, the demonstrations I'll show of uh, throwing the iPhone, the first one will be a stable rotation, which is about the z-axis. That has the largest moment of inertia of the iPhone, and then an unstable about the x-axis, which has its intermediate moment of inertia. Cutting down a little bit, one of the first things I did here in the notebook was taking what are the published properties for the iPhone and using those to approximately derive the uh, inertial properties of the phone. So Apple gives the mass of the phone of 148 grams, so converted to kilograms, 0.148, and then height, width, and depth, which we can cross-correlate against the diagram to say that the height is the dimension in the y, y axis, width is the dimension in the x, and then the depth is the dimension in, in d. What I'm using for those uh, are strictly for the dimensions as I'll, I'll show when I define my rigid body box, but then for the volume of the phone, or the approximate volume if we were treating it just as a, a uh, rectangular prism. So I use those to calculate the density. 
down here, it gets calculated. We see the density is about 2,177 kilograms per meter cubed. Uh, as a reference, uh, the density of pure aluminum would be about 2,700. So it's a bit less than pure aluminum. So you'd think of the phone as being aluminum along with some glass, silicon parts, things, things of that nature. So that, that number kind of makes sense. Uh, you have a phone that's a lot of aluminum with a, with a number of uh, less dense parts and you get to something around 2177. This is of course an approximation that I'm making off of uh, published properties so I can't guarantee that's hard truth but it's, it's good enough for the work that we're doing here. And then the last things are the moments of inertia. Uh, I'm assuming the thing is uniformly dense. That's what I'd call a, a shaky assumption if I was doing this for real work. Uh, but for the demonstration in the YouTube video, that's good enough. And then like I said, the IXX term, uh, that's the intermediate uh, moment of inertia, which suggests it'll be unstable. IYY is uh, substantially smaller than IXX. That's gonna be the stable axis, what I'll, I'll call that, like a rotation about the, the long axis of the phone. And then finally, IZZ is our largest moment of inertia, which also makes it stable. So we're gonna take the uh, density and then the dimensional properties and build that into a dynamics model in MomDot. Okay, so now I will go in and build the rigid body box that we're going to use to represent the iPhone. So I'll go into the bodies menu here, rigid body box, hit the plus sign. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to the point in the frame that we created with the free motion joint a moment ago. So select A for the point, lowercase and uppercase A for the reference frame. And next we plug in the values that we just saw for the iPhone, which will be our rigid body in the model. So for density, 2177. For length, 0 0.0673. Width, 0 0.1384. And for height, 0 0.0073. Can hit the check mark here. And as we see that green box that we've got in the center, that's going to represent our iPhone, which is about to go flying. Uh, so next thing I'm going to do is I am going to throw my iPhone. I don't recommend that you try this at home, but I'm willing to do it for the purpose of science. Back in our notebook here, I'll show this uh, section here where I upload my data files. So uh, all of the files that are that were generated in the in the course of this video are actually preloaded into the notebook here. I'm doing this after the fact, uh, but I'm using the built-in files uh, Google Files uh, module and its upload method to to import. Uh, but the point being, uh, since you just saw that video of throwing the iPhone. The, the magic of using an iPhone for this study is that we can actually record some data from the onboard sensors and, and plot them uh, to, to further visualize the, the dynamics of the, uh, the iPhone in free air. So down here is the example data plots. Oh, zoomed in a little bit too far. The example data plots for a rotation or a toss of the, the iPhone so that it rotates by its, its uh, Z axis. So during, during one of these tests, so to speak, what I did was I pressed play on the app that I was using for recording, uh, let it play for about two seconds and then I threw it up into the air so that it uh, went up probably a little over a meter and then ultimately fell back down onto the bed which padded its landing. So that's a section of data here. We can see this kind of square wave looking form in the omega z term and at and that just kind of goes to its value of about minus 25 and then holds constant right there. At the same time uh, the Omega X and Omega Y are kind of oscillating. Uh, they end up getting about a plus or minus five, uh, five radian per second uh, oscillation. Uh, 
where they are out of phase with each other. Uh, you kind of get a sine in one and a cosine in the other, but the, the amplitude uh, and the frequency is pretty much constant during the time that the, uh, that the phone is in the air. So the next step that I did with the data was basically zooming in to look at just that free motion period of time. So that's between about zero and 0.8 seconds here. Somewhere between 0.8 and 0.9, you can see it actually, the, the iPhone hit the ground and you get these little spikes here and then kind of settles back in. But the, the free motion that we're modeling is actually between about zero and 0 0.8. Now to model the free motion, uh, to, to extract an initial value that is basically as long as it's in free motion if you can take out a single state value uh, that can re represent the initial value and you can propagate that forward in time in a simulation so what I did was aligned with t equals zero and then took an omega x out minus 6.1 omega y at that same time of one radians per second but the predominant term is going to be the omega z of zero of minus 25.5 so presumably if we've done our modeling correct, we can take those three values, initialize our model there, and then as we integrate out the equation to motion, uh, we should be able to model effectively the same thing that we just tested through throwing our iPhone in the air and extracting its motion sensor data. All right, returning to MomDi, now we're gonna go back into our joints menu and we're gonna edit our free motion joint labeled A to reflect the states that we just saw. So for, we're gonna modify our, our rate terms, which are our initial velocities and initial angular velocities. So for our rate T0, which is the initial velocity in the body's x-axis, we're gonna give it a four value of four. Same for the rate T1, so that's uh, meters per second and given the initial geometry that'll just uh, start the phone going upward in a nice arc shape and then for the rate r0 r1 and r2 those are the initial body rates in the omega x uh, or in the a sub x a sub y and a sub z axes and we're going to give those the same batch of initial values that we saw in the notebook plots so minus 6.1 1 and minus 25.5 all in radians per second so hit the check mark here and now we can go ahead and begin the simulation showing off a new feature here we now have multiple views that the axes can rotate around so i'll put it in an isometric view which will make for a nice visualization of this uh, flying iphone here so once it goes flying, much like what we saw in the video, track with your eye the A sub Z axis, which it starts out pointing to the left. As you can see, it's got a little bit of wobble to it, uh, but in stable rotation, that axis, uh, the primary axis of rotation, always stays roughly oriented in the same direction. If we go into our report, take a look at our plot, we can see uh, down here on the bottom that cyan line uh, reflects our angular body rate in the A sub Z axis, and the purple and green are the angular body rates in the X and Y axes. So we can, we can see very similar to what we saw in the notebook, the primary axis of rotation stays nearly constant with a little bit of wobble, um, but the two additional axes are uh, oscillating, but pretty much in a pure sinusoid with constant amplitude and, and phasing. So it's stable rotation there. And then we can also look at our equations just for fun. The kinematic equations are the time derivatives of our uh, positions and quaternions, which we see are related to the generalized speeds. Here's our mass matrix with a, the same mass value in the upper left diagonal and then the inertia tensor in the lower right. And then the forcing tensor or the forcing vector on the right uh, which applies the gravity and additional rotational terms into our equations of motion. So that's good and interesting, the stable rotation. Now let's uh, cut back to the video and I'll show you a example of unstable rotation where we initially give the body uh, now a high angular velocity in the A sub X or the iPhone's X axis.
Turn into the notebook, we can see a bit more of the data. Again, with the unstable case rotating about the Z. So now we get down to this plot, we can see it's quite different from the first one we saw. Similar method to acquiring the data, we hit play, let it run for about two seconds and threw it up in the air. But in this case, rather than seeing one single, uh, one single axis that dominates the motion like we saw before with the Omega Z looking kind of like a square pulse, we now see kind of an oscillation of all three axes. Um, and there, there's not really a, a predominant or a, or a uniform set of motion. So what, we, what I tried to do when I threw it was basically try to start it with motion that was predominantly in the mega X axis. But what I, what I learned going back to my dynamics course book is for, for this type of body, it's almost impossible or, or perhaps even literally impossible uh, to have a motion that's purely about the unstable axis. Any perturbation, about the other two axes will, will result in a, uh, a, a tumbling motion of the object. So what happened here, it, I mean, coincidentally, it's also just hard for a human being to even try to, to get a dominant motion in the unstable axis of, uh, just based on the geometry of the object. But what, what happened here is I started uh, with, the, again, about a 26, in this case, rating per second motion about the Omega X and relatively smaller uh, terms at the time that I released it in the Omega Y and Omega Z. But at the, right about zero is about the time it would have left my fingers. And immediately from that point forward, the Omega X starts to rapidly decrease. At the same time, you'll see some growth in the Omega Y and the Omega Z, but you get to this equilibrium point as the Omega X crosses zero where they, the accelerate angular acceleration basically switches direction um, and uh, it will see this in the visualization of the motion itself what what basically is happening is the orientation of the the entire phone uh, the orientation of the x-axis is actually completely reversing and so that's a that's characteristic of an unstable motion it's just a, a fairly uh, complex dynamical response, but we'll, we'll see that as complicated as these waveform looks, there is actually the, the math checks out and we can reproduce the same thing in the, in the math model. All right, once again, we are going to update our free motion joint now with properties from the unstable rotation about the A sub X axis. Go back in and edit the joint named A. What I'm going to do here for visual effect is I'm actually going to give it a, another uh, rotation about the y-axis. So this will just flip the phone 90 degrees. So it's kind of horizontal like in the video I took when I threw it. Now because I've rotated and the velocity terms are given in the body axis, I'm actually going to modify those velocities such that the actual motion relative to the inertial frame will be in the same direction. Okay. And now going in and modifying our body rates, just as we saw in the notebook, the largest term is going to be the omega x term, 26.1 radians per second. And then relatively smaller terms in R1 and R2, I'm going to put in minus 8.2 and minus eight. Okay, with the check mark, the phone has been returned to its initial position, but now you can see it's rotated relative to how we started the first simulation. Go ahead and simulate it. And now what we'll see once the simulation completes and we start the animation, much like what you saw in the video, we see a substantial tumbling motion of the phone. Again, that's the unstable motion that I've talked about. And then here's the thing to track in comparison to the motion about the A sub Z axis. If you watch the A sub X axis, which is the primary axis of rotation initially oriented to the right, you can see it flip flops back and forth where 
uh, yeah, that's that's basically the characteristic of the unstable motion is it cannot maintain rotation or it cannot maintain orientation of that primary rotational axis. Again, going back to the plots, we can see in the body rates on the lower plot that they very much resemble what we saw in the Google Collaboratory notebook. And to prove that, what we'll do is we'll actually export the data. Now I won't dwell on this because I covered this in a, in a separate video, but if we hit the export button here, hit simulate, then on the iPad in this case, in that documents folder, which you can access through your files app, there would be a .csv formatted file uh, that you can import and share uh, with your desktop, which is what I've been doing here. Um, so now I'll cut back over to Google Collaboratory and finish out with the, uh, the more detailed comparison of Momdyne with the experimental result. As I mentioned before, the files I generated in the Momdyne simulation a minute ago were preloaded up above so that we can compare them to our, to our test data. Um, so right here, uh, we previously uploaded those files and now we just use uh, couple line items here to load them into our workspace and finally we go ahead and we plot so this is the same plot that we saw above at least the solid lines in it for the uh, for the measured data then I've added on here the dash lines which are the integrated equation of motion that we saw just a moment ago animated so we can see if we initiate initiate the simulation given the properties I defined for uh, with the initial values that we took from our, our data, we can see these dash lines track pretty well uh, to what we actually measured. In fact, I mean, from my perspective, uh, impressively well, given some of the approximations at play, given the fact that I don't have a perfect measure of the actual inertial properties of the body. And, you know, to be quite honest, I have a case on my phone like most of us do, which I didn't even bother to include. Uh, but nevertheless, we can see that the appropriate dynamic states in the simulation track right along with what we what we measured from the onboard sensors. Kind of looks like we have some slight differences in phasing, like the simulation might be oscillating just slightly faster than the than the phone itself. But I, I think that's a pretty believable uh, response we have here, saying that the two things are showing the same thing did the same thing with the unstable axes of rotation. Uh, pretty much uh, same observations. What I'd say just as an a, uh, observer here is that it doesn't match quite as well. Uh, from my perspective, that's understandable on the basis of the fact that this is a, a pretty complicated set of physics that we're, we're actually uh, a pretty complicated set of physics. And I, I would also say a, a uh, an onboard sensor that the you know probably has a little bit of error in its own right uh, but we can pretty much grasp that the the dynamic simulation is creating pretty much the same behavior as what we got when we when we threw the phone up in the air and, and took data with the onboard sensor so uh, I, I have to say I this is some of my my favorite plots that I that I get to generate and uh, it, it, it's pretty cool to have a, a little bit of data to actually back uh, anchor the the math against. So, uh, you know, just just kind of as I as I look at this, I, I beam and take a little bit of pride in being able to show this. So, as I said, all of this notebook will be available as an appendix to this code, and I won't touch on it here. Uh, but we are able to actually generate automatically within Momdyne a, a set of pure, well, not pure Python code, Python code that relies on the widely available SymPy and SciPy and Matplotlib libraries, which are uh, built into the Google Collaboratory um, to, to basically allow you to simulate without the app the exact same thing. So this plot here gets a bit chaotic. Uh, but if you were to reduce it down to just these last three states here, that would be exactly the, the same thing that we saw plotted up again, up above. So I'll, I'll provide that as well in case you want to do a little bit of experimentation yourself. If you want to change parameters, if you want to look at some of the, the symbolic equations, that's all embedded there. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. Um, please have a look at the website. 
If you're interested in trying out the app, it is in beta testing right now for iPhone and for Android. Uh, just get in touch with me and I'd be happy to send you that link. Please give me a, a little bit of information about yourself when you do that, like uh, where you come from, why you're interested in, in it, and so on and so forth. And with that, thank you for viewing, and I'll catch you, uh, catch you next time.